Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. A trait of authors working in Amelia highly attuned to the performative background of an evolving literary tradition, the kind of Amelia that produced compositions. Such authors are often very eager to trace the history of traditionally stabilized items such as proverbs back to a primal moment, running on the mythological fuel of the character who says it and where it is possible to listen in as a proverb is coined and achieves currency. Following traditional forms back to the world of their originating mothers and fathers happens to be a reflexive preoccupation not only of the early and medieval literary traditions that self-consciously grew out of and alongside oral tradition. The desire to recover that primal conception still informing an ongoing process also underlies the efforts of folklorists and other oral tradition toilers in the field of oral tradition studies, making it all the more possible for us to appreciate both the deep roots in the past and the expanding future of scholarship on oral composition, performance, and transmission the syndrome whereby a tradition attributes a text, or a storyteller, or performer attributes all part or part of his her repertoire, to a spatially or temporally distant mentor, whereby the aged Shanachi expresses regret that the scholar in search of traditional material had not come to interview him before his memory had grown rusty, or in time to speak with another tradition bearer, even more knowledgeable than the Shanachi but no longer alive. Having invoked one kind of deferral topos, I now resort to another. Where can one start to account for all that he has done for oral tradition studies, overcome disciplinary and linguistic boundaries into previously unknown territory, dramatically expanding our sense of the range of living laboratories in which the investigation of epic, ballad, lament, and other living genres of oral performance can be productively conducted. Crisscrossing the globe in his academic travels, contributing his research and ideas to fora dizzying in the variety of their locations and disciplinary foci, and creating an international journal that showcases the work of scholars so diverse that nowhere else would one expect to find their names listed in the same table of contents the foundation for a network binding together a vast community of scholars, many of them in the context of the NH Summer Seminars organized, being welcomed into this extended scholarly family he has helped to create, and crossing over the now virtual bridge of oral tradition, many far-flung researchers, thinkers, and innovators might never have realized that they have true soulmates who share their scholarly interests and goals. Both as a thoughtful reader over the years of the myriad submissions that have appeared in the mailbox of oral tradition, and as a researcher restlessly seeking new subject matter, see the familiar, and the orderly appearing on the horizon of our scholarly vision, in data that other editors might have found alien, obscure, or even downright threatening. Moreover, as a conference organizer of the first order, and a frequent invitee, and regular participant at the yearly meetings and congresses of organizations such as the Modern Language Association, the American Folklore Society, and the Medieval Institute of Western Michigan University, bring people on different sides of various issues together in a friendly and stimulating environment, so that they end up talking freely to each other and leaving with a commitment to stay in touch, both under the auspices of the Center for Studies in Oral Tradition at the University of Missouri-Columbia as well as in less formal settings, experts in making guests feel welcome, and giving them a very good time they are not likely to forget. His natural gift for expression, and his admirable resistance to indulging in the chronic academic habit of complicating one's writing or thinking for complications sake have helped to create a body of work that conveys a whole world of ideas, methods, and information 
and will continue to do so for generations of scholars, students, and readers to come. There is so much more in his letters than the perfunctory academic exercise or the bald statement of supposed fact. The composer is showing that he is interested not just in telling the story of some extraordinary characters but also in saying something about the profound issues implied in them. Difference between fluid and fixed discourse, between the past as happening and the past as enshrined in hindsight, complementing each other and reinforcing the same message imprinted upon each in a different way. Perhaps it is with this dual accomplishment that the author convey to us the essence of what the story has to say, that writing needs an accompanying the voice to reach its intended audience, and that communication, whether spoken or written, oral or visual, can never be completely stifled or robbed of its efficacy, eloquently and graciously taught these same truths and expanded upon them so creatively in his writings, in his teaching, and in all his exercises of a word power. Oral tradition has always been about the journey for scholars and teachers as well as for verbal artists, and their audiences, long journeys are also the most pleasant and the most rewarding. The important role of such travel is perhaps referred to most explicitly in The Pathways Project, which through its very title explores the thought technologies of oral tradition and electronic communication as complex navigation systems with infinitely variable routes. However, the metaphor of a journey to conceptualize scholarly work and even the verbal arts we study never static, always in motion. Scholarship itself a journey, Milman Parry's and Albert Lord's influential work was described as the path-breaking cast in terms of a road for travel. Later, as part of unceasing effort to pave the way for oral traditions to be studied more readily in the classroom, Envision edited teaching oral traditions as an avenue into the study of oral traditions, and, of course, even the storytellers themselves can be understood in terms of their narrative voyage, such as is the case for the ancient Greek bard who navigates through the maze of traditional story and continues this journey among the world's widely diverse oral traditions through a series of essays. Collectively, the essays explore ancient, Greek, Old English, Middle English, Latin, South Slavic, Old Irish, Modern Irish, Old Norse, and Hungarian traditions as well as issues related to biblical studies, modern media, rhetoric, folk speech, occupational humor, pedagogy, ethnopoetics, and 18th century British literature. Seldom do the students of any given scholar work in such a wide array of fields and research across such a diverse range of subjects. Success in facilitating successful journeys that derives in large part from refusal to follow convention purely for convention's sake a decision made quite apparent in imminent art. I now declare my independence, for better or for worse, from any of the modern critical schools, despite the price. One has to pay for non-alignment, departures from scholarly norm, both in bringing together of unlikely comparanda within in performance because the contexts that lie outside the received version or text are most certainly active and crucially important, and in choice to bridge the gap between academic scholarship and a general readership in how to read an oral poem through the utilization of a more readable style, championing the cause of the non-specialist. This errs on the side of simplicity and availability. The Pathways Project was described from its outset as the provocation, not a solution. The study of verbal art has, unfortunately, often been more akin to dialogue. Noting the etymological connection between canon and canon, canon has come to designate a battlefield, an intellectual fortress under siege, a primary site for cultural combat, at the heart of the battle, but refusing to accept its polarizing terms, remove the entire question away from the battlefield of the canon, 
comparing oral tradition and resist the captivity of canonical form in traditional oral epic. The danger involved with broad comparative studies is a risk worth taking, but only when it involves honest appraisal of differences as well as similarities. We mustn't press the connection too far, however, to put it mildly, neither collaborator nor teacher. Counterintuitive methods inevitably prove essential to any mission's success, poetically affirming the mutual enrichment of open dialogue, the nexus of song and wisdom. And it is just such exchanges of songs and wisdom that has helped to facilitate by establishing and directing the Center for Studies in Oral Tradition, which has served for more 25 years to foster conversations and exchanges about oral tradition that would not otherwise take place, vigilant in creating every opportunity possible for exchange and in nourishing truly interdisciplinary dialogue. Perhaps nowhere is generosity in providing opportunities for productive exchange more apparent than in teaching to influence students in numerous departments. Thoughtful mentorship has therefore enabled numerous undergraduate and graduate students in various departments to reach beyond their established curricular boundaries and aggressively pursue research enhanced by multiple theoretical approaches and finely nuanced interdisciplinary insights. The dedication to the exchange of ideas through teaching does not stop at home dedicated to even more wide-reaching exchanges, leading workshops and summer schools by conceiving of pedagogy and scholarship as dual aspects of a learning in the most essential meaning of the word inspire to maintain a commitment toward mutually nourishing teaching, research, and learning, doing what we believe in and contributing to a long and distinguished tradition, whatever individual roles fate prescribes for us, always acknowledge and celebrate the contributions of mentors and those of the field more broadly. A trait of this is brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms: Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Check out our Discord server too. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.